Hello, children. Today, I wanted to tell you a story. It's one that you have probably heard before, but it is great to get a reminder about it even still. The story is called The Prodigal Son. Now, in this story, there is a man who has two sons. So they're brothers, and the one brother stays uh, at the house and helps out a lot. Um, can you imagine, you know, someone who really does all the chores, right? Maybe someone who helps out mom and dad a lot. And the other brother was the opposite. The other brother didn't want to do any of that. He actually decided that he would like to, just imagine this is full of treasure, a little mini treasure box. He, he uh, would have liked to take whatever treasure he could get from the family that was his treasure and spend it all, right? Pretend he just spent it all on everything. But here's the problem. When you spend it all, what is left? Nothing, right? That's what happened to the second son. He went out and spent all this money, this treasure from the family. Now, what do you think happened when he was out and about and realized he didn't have any money? What would you do? Maybe uh, go and ask for help, right? So he decided he would go home, but he was not sure that his father would forgive him, right? For leaving, for using up all the money, especially so quickly. But I'm gonna show you a picture of what happened in the story. What do you think is going on right here? Here's the son, and here's the father. His arms are open, and the father is greeting him. The father saw him through the window and ran to meet him and gave him a hug and gave him a ring on his finger and also gave him sandals on his feet and even gave him a party that would have involved all kinds of celebrations and food and things like that, people gathering to welcome him home. Now, this is quite a strange story, right? A lot of times, if someone makes a big mistake like that or if someone, you know, does something that we think of as wrong, we don't always celebrate that, right? But this story is about forgiveness. So what we can remember is that God is like the Father. And God forgives us even when we make mistakes, even when we do something that's wrong or hurtful. We can go to God and remember that God's arms are wide open to us to forgive us. That God sees us and runs to us if we ever stray. Uh, that God will welcome us back home. So that's just a, a reminder of a story I'm sure you've heard before, but it's great to remember the forgiveness we have in Jesus and the love that will never be taken away. So let us pray together as we close in an echo prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we know that sometimes we make mistakes, but thank you for forgiving us and thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you, children. See you next time. Hi, friends. Today, I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer as I read a selection from the Book of Common Worship. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have created and preserved the world. Father of Christ and the giver of the Spirit, you rule over all of creation. The day you have made for the works of light and the night for our refreshment and strength. O Lord of love and source of all good, receive our evening sacrifice of praise. You have guided us through this day to the beginning of night. Grant us in Christ an evening filled with peace 
and a night free from sin. And when at last we come to our own end, bring us into the everlasting life of your kingdom, where you live and reign with Jesus Christ, your Son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Good evening, my friends. For my contribution to tonight's Vesper, I'd like to share a few quotes and some thoughts generated from Mr. Rogers' life's journeys, according uh, to Mr. Roger. I think that uh, they are applicable to the situation we find ourselves in as we continue to walk this journey of pandemic together. The first I think I've shared with you before. He writes, We'd all like to feel self-reliant and capable of coping with whatever adversity comes our way. But that's not how most human beings are made. It's my belief, he continues, that the capacity to accept help is inseparable from the capacity to give help when our turn comes to be strong. It can sometimes be difficult to ask for support when we need it. But having someone we can count on to stick with us through the tough times can make those times much more bearable. My friends, these are times that we need each other more than ever. I know that for many of us, it's really tough uh, to reach out and to ask for help. It's tough to say, uh, I'm vulnerable, uh, I'm in need, and I need your support and your help. But in order, I think, for all of us to remain healthy, um, we need to find the courage to do that. I remember uh, many years ago, uh, during the summer, the state parks and the national parks would ask for clergy volunteers uh, to come to the park and um, to help out. Uh, and what they had in mind was uh, to provide pastoral counseling. Now, you might say, well, why on earth would you need pastoral counseling in national parks and state parks? Well, in the summer, um, what would happen is that families that were used to being apart from one another, because everybody was going to work and going to school, found themselves all close together in tents and in camping areas, sometimes for the first time that year. And uh, because we are human beings, when we are put together in small spaces, that's when certain issues come up that maybe we haven't dealt with. I think you know where this is going. And oftentimes, couples and families had to deal and face uh, and uh, f face problems and situations that they had sort of swept under the rug um, and found that by being apart from one another, they didn't need to deal with those things. These are difficult times and times when we are called as disciples of Jesus Christ to be there for one another. I remind you that Pastor Taylor and I are here and available for counseling and support. We have a wonderful group of volunteer Stephen ministers who also are willing to walk the journey with others and many other members in our congregation. Uh, that's what it means to be a community of faith. Our deacons continue to reach out to people and I hope that you will have the courage, should you need to talk to someone, uh, to reach out and to do so. Okay, the next quote uh, from Mr. Roger is this. I am glad, he writes, that I've been able to do what I've done and not been sidetracked along the way. A teacher of mine calls it guided drift. Isn't that wonderful? You're drifting, and yet you've got a rudder. That made me think about the old uh, saying, let go and let God, um, which is sometimes difficult to do, even for me. And yet it reminds me that God is always the rudder 
Our faith in Jesus Christ is the rudder in our lives. And in the times when we feel perhaps most adrift, it's probably those times when if we would pay attention, if we would take a moment to breathe, if we would take a moment to look at our lives, we would find that the rudder that is Jesus Christ is ever present in our lives. We're never really fully adrift in life. There's something beyond. There is a presence, an essence, a divine presence, an essence that is there to guide us. And lastly, this. He writes, Teilhard de Chardin, a 19th century philosopher and theologian, writes that someone scrawled, scroll, excuse me, someone scrawled the following words on the bulletin board of the great Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Le monde demain appartiendra à ceux qui lui ont apporté la plus grande espérance, which translates in English, the world tomorrow will belong to those who brought it the greatest hope. The world tomorrow will belong to those who brought it the greatest hope. I remind you, my friends, that we as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, are the ambassadors of hope. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is absolutely nothing, nothing on earth, nothing in heaven even, and certainly nothing in the course of a pandemic that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. So continue to be those people of the greatest hope for one another and for our community. God bless you, and I'll see you on Sunday morning.